your viewers and welcome back to the South Main Arms here. Got us a 2011 Cadillac. It's the SRX. It's got the big 3.0. Uh, the guy tells me the money light is on. His wife tells him that it starts hard when it's cold out and runs poorly. So started up, brought it in the shop. Of course the vehicle's already warmed up. The guy just dropped it off. It runs okay. Started okay. Had a little bit of a weird time starting. Just a slight extended crank and then a little stumble and a flutter and then it idles. Eh, okay, no dead miss, but you can tell it's not idling quite correctly. So we're gonna hook the Alltel to it, uh, pull codes out of it, and see if that gives us some direction and see if everything all goes together. We just did a full system scan, so we're gonna go to the report. See if this makes sense. Fuel system rich, bank one and then a misfire. And then I got some ABS codes in it. Alright, so none of this stuff really matters except for the engine light. Uh, so that's interesting that it's running rich, not too often. Vehicles are run rich. I don't know if this is a flex fuel. Um, you know, if it's like an alcohol reset deal. Don't work on a lot of caddies myself, but let's see here. Rich, 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 rich. Everybody's rich and then a misfire. So let's look at our freeze frame data. You would think if it was running super rich, it wouldn't start too bad when it was cold, but maybe it's like really rich and flooding. <laughs> we'll see here. Yeah, so the fuel trim is only on one bank. So bank one, it's taking away lots of fuel. Bank two, uh, total trim's not too awful bad. So that probably does away with our theory of, of running rich because of alcohol I don't know I wonder if this engine is uh, if it's a GDI engine I don't really know right offhand but we possibly could have a um, you know a bad fuel injector on that bank perhaps so let's go just for grins and giggles let's look at live data because I don't know right offhand if it is GDI. Let's see, fuel alcohol content is at zero, it says. Um, let's see if we have a high pressure. So we have fuel rail pressure. I wonder, let's, uh, let me get a hose on this thing. Or not. I can't get a hose on because it's got big stupid looking exhaust tips. However, it is direct injection according to this. And as you can feel, the engine's warm. I just shut it off uh, a few minutes ago. So our theory, I'm bringing you along with me in case, in case I'm wrong so I can say it's ours. Our theory of potentially leaking injector is probably quite plausible because if this fuel rail pressure pit right here is the high pressure pump, then it should still be in the thousand psi range right now we can see it's at zero uh, let me grab my tripod so we'll see if that makes sense to you the um, you know if you think about this like a uh, like our evap system when we take our evap system we close the canister vent valve and we close the purge valve where you take your gas can that you know that has a half tank of fuel or half tank of gas and then you got two and a half gallons in a five gallon container and you stick it out in the sun and it's completely sealed up, it blows up and swells up because it starts to build pressure. Well, a GDI system will do the same thing when you shut the car off. It shuts off, there's still fuel contained in the high pressure system. And as the engine heat soaks into it, it'll go from a thousand pounds to, you know, two, three thousand pounds of pressure until it hits its, you know, relief. So that's usually a quick and dirty way to tell, is there a leak in my high pressure system? Is shut the car off, then go key on engine off and you should see a, a rise in fuel pressure as it heat soaks. Um, what I want to do, or what my intention is here, I might have to go get Mrs. O because I can't smell, uh, to see if there's a bunch of gas in our oil, which I think that would affect two banks more than it would affect one bank. I'm just starting to get a little bit of my smeller back. But let's see if it's way over full. And it's not, so that's good. We're, we're below the uh, we're below the full mark, so it's likely not 
you know a high pressure pump dumping a bunch of fuel uh, in the engine. So let's probably what we should do is check the service bulletins first and see if there's a bulletin out from GM. But let's start it. Let's look at our fuel rail pressure uh, data pin. See if it you know goes up to the five six hundred pounds at an idle perhaps, and then see if it drops off immediately after we shut it off. That's what we're gonna do. So you can see it had that kind of a funky start. Okay. We're idling about 300 PSI. Okay, I'm going to shut the key off. And then I'll go key on. But I don't even have to, yeah, you can see it's starting to drop immediately. So that indicates to me that we do have a leak in the high pressure system. So I've got the key back on. So let's see, so that's the data we gather. We know it's running rich, and we know we're losing high pressure fuel, so we likely have a bad injector is my assumption. I don't know if, if we go into the tests, fuel injector balance. What do we, how do we wanna do this? I wonder if we're getting a misfire, uh, perhaps on a single cylinder, Hmm, let's see, what's gonna be our next step? So I went into the cylinder power balance menu and immediately when I started at cylinder five, started having counters. And that was on immediately on startup, so I'm wondering if that cylinder is flooded. So let's do this again. Let's, let me shut this off. Let me back out of here. We're gonna let that fuel pressure drop, so essentially it should be, if it is in a cylinder, it should be flooding the cylinder currently. That's my thought here. Try to get this stinking push buttons, get these keys to turn back on. GM, you have to push and hold. There it goes, it's back on. Let's see here. So we're gonna go back into the cylinder power balance. I just wanna see if that's consistent. Um, so it's going to show miss. It shows miss on one, three, and five, which are all on bank one. I'm assuming, and one and three are likely misfiring because they're running so lean. My assumption is, or my hypothesis is, that cylinder five is the one with the bad fuel injector, and that makes that entire bank run super rich. So the uh, computer cuts fuel from that entire bank in turn making one and three run lean and misfire when cylinder five is actually uh, the little guy at fault here. So I think we're gonna have probably enough data to go with this. So let's take, I'm gonna, we're gonna fire it up now. I'm assuming that number five is flooded out right now and is what causes the, you know, causes the quick count on number five until it hits closed loop. That's my guess. That's something that makes sense to me and then looking at the history, that makes sense to me also. So, uh, now what? I'm gonna go into this fuel injector balance menu. So I went into this fuel injector balance menu. Now I haven't looked in service data to see what this is. Uh, let's fire up the engine. Go hit continue. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay. So this is going to do our injector balance like it used to with the uh, using a manual gauge under the hood. So let's do cylinder one. 58 psi drop. Cylinder two, cylinder three, cylinder four, our suspect bad one, 61, 64. So I don't see any, we'd have to look in service data to see what the theory is on how it, how it tests these, because that's kind of peculiar. We know we have a pressure loss. because we saw it in live data. 
think we might be up the creek, folks, because I think that you need to pull the intake, perhaps. I need to pull plugs. Freak me, man. I love my Chevrolet. There we go. Yeah, you know that baby's getting checked. Take off the old oil cap. Easy peasy. Mm-hmm. I don't think we can do anything. Let's stick this in before we drop the junk in the hole. Fit, well, we'll just leave it on there to plug it because we're gonna have to force that back in there. Don't, well, yeah, no, you know what? We might actually be able to get to number five. Cool, so we're gonna pull this rear coil out. What I hope to see is I hope to see a completely washed out cylinder. I think we got pretty lucky being this one. Well, we could have been real lucky. It could have been one of the front cylinders. But this should be bank one back here. This should be the number five cylinder. I'm thinking. So we'll unplug the coil. And then we'll take the coil out. We'll take the spark plug out. And this thing leaks fuel fast enough. I'm thinking that we can um, perhaps just uh, turn the fuel pump on because I think it even leaked out all the low pressure, the 50 whatever pounds from the low pressure pump. So maybe we can see it just uh, right in the cylinder. That's what I'm hoping for here. Or we could be completely wrong and have to come up with a different hypothesis. But I think we're on the right track anyways. Yeah, I'll take, let's try it. This longer one here. There we go, 10 incher. Well, everything on this car is pretty dang tight, <laughs> including the oil cap. I don't know why the GMs here. When you got to pull the plastic junk off the engine, you got to take the oil cap off, and there's, they set it down inside of a recess, so it's always full of seeds and dirt. It's kind of a ridiculous design, in my opinion. Well, this spark plug on uh, number five, this thing's darker in a pocket. So that sucker is black. I think I can smell gas. Uh, but that, that spark plug is definitely super black. I'd be curious to know. Well, I don't know if it, nah, this other one's under the intake, I think. I think it's under the edge there. Uh, of course, you can't see down in here. Um, I wonder if I can get our little bore scope back there, if that'll be helpful to us, if we can see in there. And uh, let me try that. Let me get that thing fired up. It takes a minute or two. Got about time to get a new uh, little scope here, folks. So this one's getting pretty cruddy. They get pretty abused in the shop. I just buy these cheapies off the Amazon. So let's see if you can't get it down in the spark plug hole here move my mouse out of the way. So this is the spark plug hole we're coming down into. Let's see which way is up here. Aim right down to you there. It's not a very high definition camera. Uh, that looks like gas on top of a piston to me. <laughs> we don't have to go very far. So that looks like a puddle of gas. I'm going to turn the fuel pump on. So the fuel pump is on right now. And the pressure, let me shut this off here. The pressure is holding steady. Wish we could crank up the high pressure, but uh, I don't think we really need to go any further. That is obviously gas sitting on top of the piston. Like no, I mean there's no, there's no doubt about that in my mind. Because let's see, let's wiggle the car. So see how we're wiggling the car? 
So it's definitely a liquid on top of the piston. Uh, number five is our cylinder that has the black followed spark plug. It's also the one that is uh, misfiring on startup. It's running rich on this bank. I don't think we need to go or do anything else at this point. And that's that. I think, I think the show is over, folks. <laughs> it's all over. So that's that folks, definitely needs an injector on the number five cylinder and then you know go from there. That should resolve all of his problems based on what we see and uh, we're able to kind of figure that out relatively quickly just looking at scan data, coming up with a hypothesis and then you know uh, executing it to see if that's you know what it was and that's exactly what we thought we might see. So we have to go from there. Uh, unfortunately to put injectors in these it's uh, a fair amount of a, a job you know it's just a couple hour job but you need some specialty tools uh, to do it you know the pliers to put the uh, retaining ring back on the injector rail uh, they can be a huge pain in the neck if you try to do it without the pliers and there are a couple hundred dollars for this pair of pliers that installs a clip and uh, the, the seal tools that go on the bottom. I have some of them for GMs. Uh, I've done some of these in the past, not on these particular engines, but uh, some of the three sixes I think we've done and some of the uh, Chevy pickups. So anyway, whatever. You guys had in that comment section, the questions, the comments, the Insty, the Facebook, you know what to do. Just remember viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.